Great. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Impact Your Career, Become a CPRP. Um, as Michelle mentioned, I am Molly Sullivan, the Certification Manager uh, here at the National Recreation and Park Association. And joining me today is Pam Sloan, Principal Consultant for the Municipal Resource Group, LLC. Pam is the past chair to our CPRP and CPRE Certification Committee and has graciously offered to share her experience with the CPRP Certification Program today. I'll be going through some material, um, after which we'll have a lovely chat with Pam um, and be able to answer some of your questions. I'd like to start with what is the CPRP? The Certified Park and Recreation Professional or CPRP certification is a national standard for all parks and recreation professionals who want to be at the forefront of their profession. Certifications access current knowledge and skills and the CPRP designation shows that you've met qualifications of education and experience, as well as illustrating a commitment to the profession and an understanding of key concepts within the field through the CPRP examination and continued education. Let's talk briefly about some of the benefits you as an individual applicant could enjoy through professional certification. Designations add credibility to you as a professional, showing that you have met the standards set by the certification and giving you a step up in your career. Employers recognize the CPRP as a reliable way to differentiate the most qualified, up-to-date, and determined job applicants, frequently preferring the CPRP as a job requirement, giving you a career advantage. The CPRP program focuses on practical knowledge and current real-world skills necessary in today's changing park and recreation field, staying current and applicable through the use of a job task analysis survey and ongoing yearly exam development. Finally, with a well-known certification, you can gain greater respect and recognition as a professional. And with more than 40 years of maintaining rigorous focus on relevant knowledge, the CPRP program is the most widely known and respected credential in the parks and recreation field. We're going to take some time to go over how applying for the CPRP is now easier than ever. The eligibility requirements needed to qualify cover a broad range of education and work experience, and verification of your eligibility is no longer required with the initial application. Let's look at these general steps to certification. Review the step one is review the eligibility requirements and contact NRPA with any questions or concerns about qualifying for the exam. Next, purchase your study material. It's always best to begin preparing as soon as possible. All of our study materials can be purchased in our online store, including the CPRP Basic Learning Pack and 5th Edition CPRP Study Guide. Please stay on the webinar and we'll go ahead and talk about our current promotion coming up after we have our lovely conversation with Pam. Step three is complete the initial application either online or through the mail. Official transcripts and work experience verification forms are not required with the initial application unless your application is selected for review by our random audit process. The initial application fees are $270 for members and $314 for non-members. This fee does not include study materials, and groups of three or more applicants may be eligible for discounts. Step four, once you submit your application and payment, NRPA will notify you via email of your eligibility. Finally, once you become eligible, you'll need to sit for your exam within one year. Once you pass your exam, you'll be, you will be eligible to begin receiving your continued education to complete your renewal. I wanted to take some time. We're going to go ahead and talk about some test preparation. Now that you're ready to apply for the exam, let's take a moment to discuss these quick test preparation tips. Test anxiety can be a big problem for many of us. However, if you take the time to thoughtfully prepare for the CPRP exam and follow these easy steps, you should be confident in your ability to pass the CPRP exam. Be prepared and create a study plan. Reviewing sections across multiple days will allow you to stay fresh and actively involved during the study process. Final cram sessions can add to your anxiety and don't create a long-lasting connection with the material. One of the most frequently asked questions that we get is, how long should I prepare for the exam? Because this exam is self-study, that's going to be different for each individual and how, often, and how much time you can commit to preparing for this in your daily life. Typically, 
I believe that the most uh, frequently offered amount of time is approximately three months. So if you can prepare for about three months, you should feel successful in passing that exam. Um, we did get a question from Tom, which is, what if I don't fit into any of the previous five categories and I'm non-traditional? In that instance, my recommendation would be to contact an RPA certification team. Um, we'll be able to provide you with better feedback, have you complete the eligibility form, and we'll review that. You won't have to submit any fees. We can let you know uh, whether or not you would qualify for the exam prior to moving on in the application process. So moving back into preparatory tips, um, preparing the night before, prepare the night before so you feel in control the day of the exam and get a good night's sleep. Being well rested can help with your concentration and physical feelings of exhaustion can ex exacerbate your nerves. Plan to arrive early at the testing site to avoid feeling rushed and flustered when you arrive. Remember to take a deep breath. Focusing on controlling your breathing can help quell physical feelings of anxiety. A lot of you may think that it's uh, redundant to continue to go over test anxiety, but I have to say that the number of people who contact me to say that they didn't pass their exam and they were so nervous going into it really is uh, it really is amazing how test anxiety can affect even the most prepared individual going into this exam. So it can make a huge difference just to take a few a few moments and a few steps to get yourself in the right mindset prior to to reviewing the material. Um, don't rush. Read each question fully and be sure to take the time to review each multiple choice answer before selecting one. This can make the difference between a right and wrong answer. The test questions are not written in a format to be tricky or to trick you, but they are written in such a way that they're not going to lead you to either the right answer or the wrong answer. So reading the question and the answer carefully can mean the difference between getting it right or wrong. Answer each question on the exam. Because your score is based on the number of correct questions answered and not a percentage, any unanswered question is an automatic zero. Remember, you can go through and flag those questions, if the ones that you're unsure of. So always going back and answering all the questions is a major part of passing this exam. Sean asks, if you fail the first time, are you able to retake it? Absolutely. You, there's no limit on the number of times that you can retake the exam. There is a fee involved with retaking the exam, um, and you, but you don't have to reapply in order to retake it. You just submit the fee and you're sent to the testing company, and once again, you have one year to schedule and take your exam. Valerie asks, where are the testing sites? The testing sites are located all across the United States. We work with a third-party testing vendor, uh, PSI Testing. What you do is once you are eligible to take the exam and you receive your exam instructions, you'll be able to contact the testing company and they will get you scheduled at a testing site near you within that year. Jonathan asked how many points to pass the exam and how many questions are on the exam. The exam has 150 questions, 125 of which are scored. 25 of them are being tested, uh, reviewed for, for future testing. The CPRT exam development and review is a continuous process and due to the nature of this process, the exam score is subject to change in order to maintain the minimum competency needed to pass the exam. The current exam score is 88 correct questions out of 125 scored questions. Please note that the current exam score may be updated prior to the date of your scheduled testing session. Um, there is a reduced fee if you retake the exam. I mean, it's the same every time. It's $200 to retake the exam, but it's not the full application fee. All right, so I'm just going to really quick, I'm going to finish up this slide so we can hopefully uh, move on a little bit faster. So finally, uh, just keep in mind that you should be your own cheerleader. Have a positive mental attitude and remind yourself that you can do this. There's an 83% testing rate on this exam, means that 83% of the people who are taking this exam every month are passing. You should feel confident in your ability and in your knowledge of the material and in yourself that you'll be able to successfully pass this exam. Uh, I'm going to answer a few more questions and then move on to the next slide. Uh, one question is, um, Jeffrey asks, are the prerequisite, prerequisitions for the qualifications absolute? Uh, the answer is yes. However, if you go through the 
re for the, the education and work experience requirements for this exam, it does say and related professions. That's why we ask that you do reach out to us. If you're unsure about your qualifications, it's worth reaching out to NRPA to get more feedback. We'll be able to assist you with that. If we're ever unsure, we put your material through to the certification committee um, to review, and they will review and vote on whether your education and work experience would qualify if it's not traditional to the um, qualifications. Um, the next question is, what is the time limit for testing? The, te the exam is 150 questions which you have to answer over three hours. So really quick, let's just move on to the next slide because I think I'll be able to answer some of these questions as we move forward. Um, really quick, I just wanted to talk about the strengths behind the certification program, which is um, now that we've gone through the basics which is the National Certification Board. As with all of NRPA certification programs, the CPRP is administered by NRPA, but is governed by the CPRP and CPRE Certification Committee and the National Certification Board, or NCB. Each certification has its own governing committee, like the CPRP and CPRE Certification Committee, overseen by the NCB. The NCB supports the mission supports the achievements of the NRPA's mission and is dedicated to enhancing and promoting the profession of parks, recreation, and leisure services by providing premier certifications to the industry. Uh, that goes back to that what I mentioned before in one of the original questions, which is if there's ever any question about work experience, if it's not traditional to park and recreation, it's something that we can always put through to the committee to review and vote on. Um, they govern the committee in all aspects, create the policies and procedures around the program and uh, evaluate and keep consistent the qualifications for the exam. I'm going to answer just a few more questions, then I'd like to move on to, to my uh, interview with Pam. Um, one of the questions, Ian asks, what topics are covered and how much of the test is allotted to each topic? Um, the topics of the exam covers five core competencies, finance, human resources, operations, programming, and communications. Uh, there is a percentage on each, um, which I believe is posted online, and I can get that material um, a little later, and I will reach back out to you, Ian, with that. Um, and Lydia asks, will there be a practice exam? So going back to the, there are multiple practice exams. In the CPRP 5th edition study guide, there is a practice exam at the back of the book. And we also have a separate practice exam online which I believe has about 200 questions which cycle out if you take it so it's not exactly the same every time. Um, that material is offered within the basic learning pack. Deborah asks, will I get my results immediately? Um, and will I have a chance to review what I got wrong and the correct answers? Yes, you will get your results immediately upon completing the exam. They give you a sheet with your test candidate results and how you did in each section. Um, we do not provide the, in order to assure exam security, unfortunately we're not able to provide the questions to the exam to any participant. Uh, and Alicia asks, do you have to have a CPRP in order to have a CPRE? The answer is yes, you do have to have a CPRP. It's one of the prerequisites. However, we do offer a dual application in which you can apply for both exams. Um, you take both exams within the same year and you become a CPRE. So I'd like to move on uh, to Pamela Sloan, as I mentioned at the beginning of our webinar, and throughout we will be speaking with Pam today. Welcome, Pam. Um, thank Hi. you so much for joining us. So really quick, I'd like to give a, a quick background on Pam's experience. Pam has over 30 years experience providing parks, recreation, and library services to communities in Kansas City, Missouri, and Stockton, California. While with Kansas City Parks and Recreation, she was a regional manager, and with the City of Stockton as the Director of Community Services, which included library services. A past member of the Board of Directors of the National Recreation and Parks Association, she has been on the United States Tennis Association Board of Directors and is currently a member of the USTA Northern California Board of Directors. She currently serves as an NRPA Visitor Chair for the Commission of Accreditation of Parks and Recreation Agencies, and under Pam's leadership, the city of Stockton became the first city in California to achieve the NRPA accreditation. And as a certified parks and recreation professional, she has served as a past chair for the NRPA certification committee 
and remains a member today. In addition, she has served on the CPRS Legislative Committee, NRPA Awards Committee, and NRPA Hall of Fame Committee. <laughs> with that, Pam, uh, I, as you know, I was hoping you could share some of your experience with us by answering a few short questions, so I'm just going to hop right into them if that works for you. Yes, that's fine. Great. Great. So my first question is, you know, you've been certified for quite some time. Um, I'd like to know what initially drew you to the certification and why did you make the decision to maintain it all these years? Uh, that's a really good question. First of all, greetings to everyone that's on the call uh, or on the webinar. Uh, it's a real privilege to be here today and to speak to this topic. You know, I entered into the field uh, before certification actually was in place, and so I always felt like there was a little bit lacking of, of appreciation for what we did. And then when certification came along, I think what really drew me into it is that it helped validate my professional status. Uh, it also uh, gave me an opportunity to be recognized for the knowledge and skills that I had in the field and held me uh, accountable to a higher standard. And by that, I'm saying that I'm constantly encouraged to stay educated on current trends and practices in the field. So to me, it, it was a big, huge plus to become certified. Um, I also wanted my own agency, and I'm sure many of you are thinking about this as well, that I am a value, valuable member of the team and I was willing to learn new things and keep things moving forward in a progressive manner. Uh, I also think that uh, by doing this and wanting to do this, it gave me additional confidence in who I was and the fact that it leveraged myself to move up in a system over a period of time. I wanted to share with you all, too, that even though I'm a retired Parks and Rec Director and currently serve as a consultant, I still maintain that certification. That's how important it is to me, and I, I'm very committed to that professional side, and so I'm thrilled that you are tuned into this webinar to, to take note of the importance of a CPRP or a CPRE, for as that goes. But, uh, that's basically what got me into it, the professional, the recognition and verifying that I was a professional in the field. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. So my next question is, you recently acted as the CPRP and CPRE Certification Committee Chair, one of the governing bodies, as I mentioned previously, of the CPRP and CPRE Certification Program. Can you speak a bit about your choice to join this committee and how the CPRP might have factored it into other professional experiences you've had? Certainly. Uh, initially, I mean, I was thinking the reason I wanted to be a part of this particular certification committee is that I wanted to give back to NRPA for this, what certification has done for me and how it has moved me through my career and, and recognized the efforts that I've made over the years. Uh, basically, you know, certification added to that credibility of who I was professionally uh, it acknowledged the the skill level and knowledge that I had in the field over the years, and, and it held me to those standards as I indicated earlier. Uh, it was this was a great opportunity, or at least I saw it as a great opportunity to be a part of a team that really promoted certification, who who also constantly works to improve the process. Uh, many people don't realize how much work goes into this particular committee, but we look at a lot of things. It's not just about appeals that uh, you know participants in the program have had, but it's also taking a look at the policies and procedures on an ongoing basis. So I think it's important that we always look to see how we can improve that process and how we move forward. Along with that, we set the policies and procedures for certification and make recommendations, and I think that's important. We listen to what we hear from our appeals and issues that come up through the process itself. So I think one thing that's been real positive about being a part of this committee is the fact that it has uh, educated me on the challenges that some have in the process. And so we take a strong look at that. We take it very serious when we uh, work in this committee to see what it is that we can improve and how we can make things clearer for others. Uh, I find myself, as a, since I've been a part of this particular committee, promoting even more so 
the certification process. And I, I see that happening when I do the CAPRA visits. I'm constantly talking to staff um, about where they are in their in their career and use that as uh, a means to promote the certification and how it can benefit them. I also use it in my consulting uh, work that I do, that I talk to professionals there and say, this is something you may want to really get into because it will validate who you are and what you do and how you can move down the road. So uh, every day when I become in contact and with a professional, a park and rec professional, I talk about this because I believe in it. I think it really makes a difference in who we are. And as I had stated earlier, I entered in before certification, in the field before certification came about. And it, it was sad because most people didn't realize what we put into our work effort and who we are. Because at that time, and you probably heard this this cliche, but we were people who threw out a ball and people recreated. Well, that, we're much more than that. And so the certification helps validate that. And so that's why I'm a part of this committee and I encourage others in the future as you move through your career that you consider being a part of the committee structure uh, within NRPA. Fantastic. So do you have any advice for those considering becoming certified that you'd like to share? Yeah, I, you know, I thought about, that's an interesting question, actually. <laughs> uh, I think uh, what we oftentimes forget about is stepping outside of our box of what we do in the field. Uh, oftentimes, people who are in just recreation don't take the time to learn about the park side, or they don't take the time to learn about the finance and the operation. And so I would encourage you, as you go through this consideration that you take a moment and think about what you don't know and what you need to learn about and looking at things outside of what you do day to day. I think you'll find that that will help you tremendously as you go forward and take the exam and become certified. As, as you know, it's not just about recreation and programming. It's about the finance side of the operation. And if you don't know that, I think, by the way, that is one area that uh, those that have struggled with the exam seem to take this particular area as, as really hard because they haven't taken the time to learn about it and know the ins and outs of finance. So I would strongly encourage you to do that. I would also say that uh, talking with your colleagues who have already become certified, find out what that process was like for them, what did they do to, to prepare for it, um, I would also strongly encourage you to use the NRPA study tools. There's many online webinars and study opportunities that are available to you, sample tests, sample. there are study guides to use. Um, and I have also found in the past that, uh, that if you work with a study group, that is also very helpful as well because people sometimes, others see it a little differently. And so that gives you an opportunity to to stop and think about, oh, yeah, I haven't thought about that process or I'm not familiar with that. So you learn a lot in that whole process of using a study group in itself. Mm -hmm. Great. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we move on to more questions? Well, one thing you mentioned <laughs> earlier on uh, when you opened up with the session and everything is uh, preparing for the, for the test itself. I can't uh, express how important it is to be sure and give yourself enough time to prepare. So set a, a, a test date early enough that you do have that time to prepare. Don't set it and then go next month because I'm going to guarantee you you're not going to be prepared. There are things that you need to do and read up on to make sure that you are ready for the exam. And one other thing that came to mind as well as you were talking about you know, take a deep breath, take your time, read the question carefully. I think it's important not to over-evaluate the question or read into the question mm -hmm. far more than it needs to be because what happens then is that you get confused and you go, well, what if, what if, what if? Well, if you don't know all of the particulars about the question, the most important thing you do is read the question again carefully and answer what it's asking you and not try to read other things into it. And that's 
something I think is very important because you do get nervous sometimes when you're taking tests, no matter how prepared you are. So that would be my recommendation. I'm really interested to piggyback on that as well. I know that um, for many of the individuals who might be taking this exam who have had quite a bit of experience in the field, one of the challenges I think people will face is that the material in the book is and on the exam is a is a general best practice. Um, and what that means is that for a very broad field. So what we often tell people is when you're looking at the material, you're being tested on the material that is in uh, that is the best practice that is in the study guide. Um, it's worth it to use your experience as context to remember the material, but not use your experience to fight the material that's in the book. Just because you're doing something different doesn't mean it's wrong. Um, you know, we understand this is a very broad field, and these are considered general best practices. Um, so I think it's, it's definitely worthwhile to take your time on that exam and, and take your time to review the material. And as you said, set a date for yourself. Don't let that year get away from you and then feel rushed into taking it. Um, thank you so much, Pam. That, this was fantastic. We really appreciate you taking the time out of, the, out of your day to share your experience. Uh, we have a few minutes left, and what I'm going to do is I'd like to, to hop over into talking about our current promotion. Um, and then I'd be happy if we can have a little bit more time to answer any remaining questions between Pam and I. Um, so Pam, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. Um, right now, if you apply for the CPRP exam prior to February 29th, you will receive a free CPRP basic learning pack. The basic learning pack prep course includes modules on all five core competencies on the exam, communications, finance, human resources, operations, and programming in addition to the updated CPRP practice exam. Take advantage of this offer and let the free CPRP prep course up to a $250 value help you prepare for the next step in your career. Um, I think this is a great promotion to take advantage of. Having the online, the online modules mimic the material that is in the study guide. Everyone prepares differently. Um, but this definitely gives you an opportunity to have both the online material and if it's something that you feel would help you prepare for the exam, also you could purchase the study guide separately. Um, the, one of the questions we had is, is the online test questions the same as in the study guide? Um, the test questions online are different than the test questions you're going to find in the study guide. So if you apply now and receive that free module, you'll also get the CPRP practice exam, the online practice exam. That one has about 200 questions and they are different than the ones that you're seeing in the study guide. It's important to note that the questions in the exam are a good example of how the questions are structured so that will help you in your preparation for the exam. Um, and we'll see if there's any more questions I can answer really quick and then I think we're going to have to log off. Um, uh, Tina asked, how many are we giving away? We are giving away as many as individuals who sign up before the end of February 29th. So there's no limit on that. If you sign up and pay your CPRP application and exam fee February, prior to February 29th, you'll receive this free CPRP prep course. And Alicia uh, asks, when does the prep course take place? I believe that you have access to it for 180 days from the date of um, that you purchase it with the coupon code. Um, so you'll have it for six months from the date of purchase, and you'll be able to access it online. So it's available anytime. Um, I'll be able to answer some of these questions. I'll be able to get back to anyone who posted questions there. And again, you're also always welcome to reach out to certification at nrpa.org. Um, or reach out to me personally at msullivan at nrpa.org, and we'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. Again, I'll go through the questions posted here, and we'll make sure to get it back to everyone. If there's anything else that uh, we'd like, to, Michelle would like to add, I'm just going to give a special thanks to Pam Sloan. Thank you so much, Pam. Your experience is invaluable, and we really appreciate you taking this time to share it with us today. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Pam and Molly. Um, obviously, we have we have a few questions coming in, so Molly and I will work on reaching out to all of you. Um, and then, of course, there is always um, NRPA Connect um, in the open forum. It can be a great conversation to start um, 
discussing out there and to, to connect with others that have also been through this process or are currently going planning to go through the process. So at this point, um, our webinar is um, ending. We will have a recording of this um, available later today um, if you would like to re-listen. And we will be getting back to those of you with questions. So um, from there, I hope you all have a great rest of the day. And you may now disconnect. Thank you so much.